Welcome back from the break. Last week, the UN met in Harare, Zimbabwe, looking into solutions to the crop-eating fall armyworm caterpillar outbreak in southern Africa. One farm north of Pretoria in South Africa has been hit hard by the infest infestation. Our African Affairs editor, Adam Amuni, has this report. It appears to be the first time the fall armyworm species from the Americas has devastated crops in Africa. But the damage being caused is far worse than anyone anticipated. The outbreak has already caused damage to staple crops in 13 African countries, including Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa and Ghana, with reports also suggesting Malawi, Mozambique and Namibia. Experts from 13 countries this week spent three days in the Zimbabwean capital of Harare to create a battle plan to defeat the pests. The pest has affected countries that are the main producers of maize, a key staple for most of Southern Africa. The governments of affected countries are rightly concerned about the danger posed to agriculture and food security by these new caterpillars. The first fall armyworms were seen in Nigeria and Togo last year, with one theory saying that they arrived in Africa on commercial flights from South America or in plants imported from the region. The caterpillars eat maize, malay, rice, potato and soybean, key food sources in southern and eastern Africa, where many areas are already struggling with shortages after years of drought. The industry is going to struggle because... <laughs> The worms is eating everything they touch, so it's not going to be enough maize for all the people to eat like we usually do each year. One of the most obvious tools are chemical pesticides, which can be effective, but fall army worms are known to have developed resistance in their native Americas. For farmers like Adele Prince-Lou, it has reached a point of desperation. She has tried every possible poison against fall armyworm, but the small caterpillars are still eating all her crops in her farm, north of the South African capital, Pretoria. I'm feeling very angry because uh, a year ago we had the drought, and on this, uh, now a year later, um, we had all, all this good rains and stuff, and now these worms damaging my whole, whole crop. I'm staying on my knees, praying, hoping that some, somebody will, will come with some other poison that we can put through because I, I really did my best and nothing is working. Experts say the armyworm has the potential to cause a serious food security problem in sub-Saharan Africa. That is, unless effective strategies are used to help farmers like Jacques and Adele, who are already straining to keep their farms together. Adam Amunu, The Report. Well, joining us to discuss this is Professor Ken Wilson from Lancaster University, who has spent two decades working in Africa studying aspects of insect crop pest control and especially the use of parasites. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Wilson, for joining us. Um, firstly, uh, does this come at a bad time, especially uh, with the outbreak of famines in f four countries uh, in Africa and um, also, of course, two years of record, record droughts uh, in the continent? Yes, of course. Um with the droughts, that's obviously uh, limited food production in the region. Uh, now with the rains, unfortunately with the rains also brings with it um, uh, pests uh, like the fall armyworm that we see, plus the indigenous uh, African armyworm which uh, hit the region uh, two or three years ago. And uh, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, in, in the report um, it, it mentioned that uh, causes of this um, uh, of this caterpillar was from South uh, South America. Um, uh, do you agree with that? Yes, and uh, before uh, January 2016, uh, the fall armyworm was recorded almost exclusively in uh, the Americas, mainly in Central and Northern parts of South America. Uh, but from there it also migrates into uh, North America, into the United States and Canada, and further south to, to Chile. So the fact that uh, it's now been recorded in, uh, in Africa, um, it, it's very unusual. It's most likely, as your report suggests, that it was imported from the Americas, uh, probably on, uh, on plants. 
And um, uh, I'm aware you just came back from Zimbabwe um, from the UN talks. Um, what is the feeling there uh, from what you've uh, experienced? Um, well, a um, bit of bewilderment, to be honest. Um, although uh, the reports of outbreaks of fallen vermin in uh, Nigeria and Togo and Benin and Sao, uh, Sao Tome, um, the previous year, um, I don't think there was an expectation that we'd see on the worms in southern Africa, uh, certainly not to the extent and so soon as they have been reported. So a lot of what we were discussing in the meeting was uh, exchanging of information to see what people uh, found uh, were working, what wasn't working, the scale of the problem, and try to look forward to thinking what can be done about this going forward. And, uh, and has there been any progress in terms of what needs to be done? Well, it's early days yet. Sorry, the, the main uh, purpose of the meeting was for information sharing and to draw up a, a battle plan. That will um, be taken forward over the next few uh, days, weeks and months. Uh, it's it's going to be a long battle, it's going to be a hard battle. Um, there are some basic questions we, we still don't know the answers to, such as what's the best way to control these things, what's the best way to, to monitor them, um, and uh, what's the prospects for long term for the future of, of food security in the region because of this new, new invasive pest. And uh, in the VT, we, we, we saw a few farmers um, you know, expressing you know, almost tears at the, at, at the failure of a lot of in, uh, in pesticides not working. Um, have you, what sort of feeling uh, have you got from the farmers when you visited? Um, well, again, as in your VT, there's lots of people um, wondering what, what they could possibly do to, to combat this pest. In its native range in the Americas, it's well known uh, that this species uh, developed resistance to the major um, pesticides, the pyrethroids. Um, we don't know precisely where these insects came from, so we don't know which pesticide it's resist, resistant to. So there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of trial and error to work out what pesticide works best. In the meantime, farms that I've spoken to and heard from have been using a range of different approaches, um, some with success and with, with big failures really, um, using things like washing powder, um, uh, fertilizers, um, a whole range of different things. Some people might be aware of indigenous plants that may, they may be able to use, such as uh, tephrosia, which I've heard has been successful in some cases. Um, neem may also be uh, appropriate. Um, but, say, it's early days and, and people are really, it's a bit of trial and error at the moment. And, and one of the things to come out of this meeting is the need for uh, a more systematic approach to screening different types of pesticides, work out uh, a recommended pesticide for the region. And uh, how, how can this uh, uh, outbreak potentially affect and not just the continent but uh, you know the wider, com wider uh, community outside of, outside of Africa? Uh, well of course Africa is the most pressing uh, issue at the moment. Um, we need to uh, determine how far it's going to spread within uh, southern Africa. Uh, my feeling is that probably most of sub-Saharan Africa will eventually um, get this uh, fall army worm and, and if we don't come up with a, an approach for trying to sort it then uh, that's obviously going to impact food security on the continent. Uh, that will have knock-on effects in terms of importing uh, foods from other parts of the world and with those increased imports comes an increased threat of, of importing more, more pest species. And then, of course, uh, once it's in Africa, um, it's these, these fall army worm, they grow up to be moths, and those moths have very good flying ability. So it's very likely that from, uh, from the northern part of the range in Africa, it may well find itself into southern Europe. Um, if it's in southern Europe, it may well be able to uh, undertake um, continual reproduction and, and maintain itself there. And from there, migrate on a seasonal basis into northern Europe, in, into the UK and other parts of, of Northern Europe. And of course, then from Southern Europe into Eastern Europe and potentially into Asia. And in terms of uh, the fall army worm uh, itself, um, I believe um, uh, no crop is safe. Um, is, that, is that the case? Um, more or less. It's, it's got a very wide host range. 
Um, the indigenous African army worm, which has been uh, in Africa for, for a very long time, that is restricted to, to cereal crops, principally maize. Uh, whereas this fallon worm from the Americas has a very wide host range and, and eats most of the, uh, uh, the crops that are grown throughout sub-Saharan Africa. Um, the one exception appears to be, at the least at the moment, uh, cassava, uh, possibly because it's cyanogenic, so it produces cyanide poison in response to, to insects feeding on it. So cassava appears to be the, the moment, the one stable crop that uh, may be resistant to Uh Probably a stupid question, but do you think that could be a potential temporary solution for these farmers? Uh, well, certainly those farmers that are growing cassava will, um, if they get fall army burn, then that's something that may be uh, protected, and it may be that we see an increase in, in cassava production, in, in the short term at least. Um, but uh, it's very early days, as I say, and we may well find that uh, there is some varieties of the fall army burn that can then feed on cassava as well. And lastly, uh, uh, from those talks, um in terms of the funding needed, uh, has there been any talk of that? Um, well, certainly funding will be an issue, um, and that will need to address some fundamental questions like how do we best monitor this pest species? What are the what are the um, um, uh, technologies required in order to uh, determine its spread, its movement, where it's likely to go to, and then funding for uh, not just for determining the best chemical pesticides, but also perhaps developing alternative approaches to the controls, such as the use of uh, biological pesticides based on insects, viruses, and other diseases. Okay, Professor Wilson from Lancaster University, thank you for joining us. Uh, but that's all the time we have for on this episode of The Report. I want to thank all my guests on today's show, and thank you at home for watching. Do remember that you can keep up with us on Twitter by following at IslamChannelCA and by using the hashtag The Report. But for now, we'll leave you with scenes from a carnival in the Haitian town of Jackmill. Join us at the same time tomorrow for The Report. But until then, good night. Thank you.